So we are playing through the new Voracious Resurgence storyline, the new quest line that the Final Fantasy XI developers have introduced in the past year uh, on stream the other day. And in one instance in Fei Yin, the next stage of the quest was to trade an item that could be obtained in Temple of Ugalef to uh, whatever the point of interest was at the time. And I was like, that can't be right because we've been nowhere near Temple of Ugalef this entire time. Why would that be the case? And it was. And you could buy in the auction house and, you know, whatever. But I, it brought back so many memories of random items that you would have to, to you'd need in the crawler's nest that you'd obtain in Ifrit's Cauldron. Like they had nothing to do with each other and you'd have no idea that you needed it if you didn't have one of these quest guides. But that's not even the point. The point was I didn't even think twice about it. I didn't even look up what the steps of the quest were because of how easy it was for me to teleport out of there, get back to the auction house, buy the item, and then warp pretty close to where I was in in like four minutes and finish this off. It, it took no time at all. Back in the day, <laughs> that would have wasted at least 20 to 30 minutes for me. If nothing else, just to warp out, go buy the item if I can. If not, I've got to warp, find my fastest way to Temple of Uglef, which is not the easiest place to get to with, unless you have outpost warps, which makes it a lot easier, but we'll get there. Farm the item, go back, and then make my way through the the annoyance that is Busanai Glacier again to get back to Fei Yin. I bring this up because multiple times this has led us to this conversation about the importance and frustration of the huge vastness that is Van Adil. And the reason it feels that way being that travel for a long, long time was so difficult. We've, we've danced around it. It's come up in various videos and topics. This one is going to be solely about that. Let's talk about it. Travel in Final Fantasy XI. To be honest, I'm not going to lie. I uh, I looked back in my video history to see if I had made this video. And if I have, I have no idea what I called it <laughs> because I couldn't find it. But I swear, we've danced around. We've talked about this countless times because it's one of the biggest aspects of Final Fantasy XI and classic MMOs in general that is so starkly different from modern games. In modern games, they're designed so that you can you can attack them in, in small chunks of times, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours at most, and, and make meaningful progress. And if it is difficult to travel and it takes 20, 30 minutes to get somewhere, that blows that idea out of the water because you might hop on and spend your entire time just getting somewhere. And while that felt like some of the magic of how Final Fantasy XI was originally designed, it certainly is difficult in today's approach to gaming for, for most players. That doesn't mean it's bad, so let's get into that. First of all, let's talk about uh, you know the period of Final Fantasy XI that we're sort of discussing in this video. I would say, you know, the mid-2000s, late-2000s, well, most people consider the classic era of Final Fantasy XI. You've got teleports, uh, the home point crystal, that you can set to warp back to whenever you die or if you use the spell like warp or an instant warp scroll. Uh, outposts, critical element of the game was there pretty much from, from the onset, I believe. Does anyone know, was it like not day one? Was that like a Zillart introduction? I don't think so. I think outposts were always there. Not unity warps, survival guide books, and the home point warps, obviously. This is the the classic style of mostly, you know, relying on, on the friendliness of other players with with warp twos, teleports, and various elements like that, or your own uh, acquisition of outposts. That was the, kind of the biggest thing. Of course, there's also the the ability to travel on foot via chocobos, literally foot, uh, airships, boats, all that stuff. But, and don't, don't get me wrong, those are critical. So what are the pros and cons of this approach? Let's just run them down the list, pros, cons, and you guys can decide what you guys think is better because honestly, I don't know the answer to this one. I have missed this style in the past because it makes modern games like Final Fantasy XIV, World of Warcraft kind of feel small when you can teleport and warp to any point in the game so easily and so readily, even modern Final Fantasy XI. But there are cons too. So pros, we've already talked about this. When it is difficult to get from edge to edge, zone to zone, place to place, the world feels massive. And Final Fantasy XI was a big game just in terms of raw space that you can travel around it. But that size was increased dramatically by a little bit difficulty, uh, speed of movement. The, the on foot speed was so slow, 
so incredibly slow. And uh, of course, just the the difficulty of, of travel. Uh, there wasn't a ton of ways, there weren't a ton of ways to get from point A to point B. And especially once you kind of left your, your sense of place. So you can ask for a teleport from a friend, you could outpost somewhere, or you could hire a chocobo. We were just talking about this in the Raising the Chocobo video. Once you were out in the wild, it was much more difficult to get from place to place unless you had one of those people with you or you were near an outpost so you could take it back to the city. But in the city, you had many options for going out. But a lot of times you had to return home before you could travel out somewhere else. That was often the fastest way to get places. So, huge world. Two, a uh, sense of presence. Because the world felt so big and the zones so meaningful and impactful, making your way through them in itself was kind of a challenge. You kind of felt what it was like to be in that zone for any length of time in uh, how dangerous it was, how profitable it was, uh, the efficiency of leveling, just different opportunities that you felt like while you while you were there that you had quests, uh, missions, places that you, you came to love or came to hate. I mean, it's hard to say if I hate or love certain Final Fantasy XIV zones because I feel like I'm not in them all that long. Sure, you've got the leveling experience where you're kind of running through quest lines and missions through that leveling area and you might revisit them for various aspects, but it, it's not the same kind of like, I spent so much time here for various reasons that I grew attached to it. Like Lothane Plateau has a very particular kind of emotion that it evokes in my mind. And it's very different from Ifrit's Cauldron. <laughs> They're like two totally separate experiences. And partially that's it made important and impactful because it's it's much harder to get to one place than it is the other. Ifrit's Cauldron is like a, a day's journey <laughs> by, by air, by sea, by outpost warp. Not only this, but your uh, ability to travel within the game was such a big aspect of how you could approach Vanadil, uh, earning the chocobo, earning the airship pass, earning your outpost warps, that the dynamic of how you could play Final Fantasy XI changed as you evolved and, and earned sort of your stripes in regards to travel. And once you sort of, you expanded the world, your scope within it expanded, expanded as well. And it was such a unique approach, and I'm sure most MMOs have this feeling where all of a sudden you're you're a higher level and you can go further and you can expand that horizon to more difficult and dangerous areas. But the way that travel was a, a approached in Final Fantasy XI, I mean, even zones that you could technically handle, I'm talking about like the starting zones of Sandoria and Bastok. If you started in Windurst, they weren't really part of your general approach to play because it was so hard to get there but once you got the the necessary outposts and you'd gain some levels and maybe you could take an airship if you're saying like okay i'm about to level a new job but i think i want to level this job in bastok and worse comes to worse you take the airship to juno and then from juno to bastok and you're there it'll take a, an annoyingly long amount of time but if you're planning to spend a lot of time there that was an option but it might not have been an option at level one level 10 it wasn't until you were 30 40 and and had leveled a while and experienced made a deal that you're like, I would like to also experience this zone. It had nothing to do with the difficulty of the zone, just where you were physically in the game. And I just brought up like an interesting kind of point about spending time in a place. You had to think about that and be like, okay, how long did it take me to get here? How long is it gonna be if I have to come back? And how long do I wanna spend out there? Like, am I gonna spend a lot of time? A perfect example is Kazam. We were just talking about this on the stream. By the way, I mentioned this earlier, but if you didn't know, we stream every Tuesday and Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. Definitely come by and say hi, bring your favorite stories to Final Fantasy VII. We play a lot of games, but uh, definitely a lot of Final Fantasy VII. So I hope to see you there. But like what we were talking about is when you knew that you were gonna go be leveling in Kazam in Yutunga Jungle and Yoda Jungle from like, you know, 25 to maybe 31, 32, you might not leave for a while. You might set your home point in Kazam. There was a nice auction house there. There was a a, a Moogle stand. <laughs> Honestly, one of the funniest ones. It's just one Moogle in like a little stand. He's like, hi, I'll take care of all your Moogling needs. Just one little guy. But it was a bit of a journey. And, and the immediate response was, yeah, but once you got the outpost warp, it's like a five minute, albeit confusing run back to Kazam. Yes, but they were some of the more difficult outposts to get if A, you hadn't gotten the airship yet, uh, and B, you just didn't have control of the zone. It took people a while to kind of get lucky enough that they finally got the airship, could get to Gazam, had time, 
owned the zone, all like all these things had to come together for you to finally get those outposts. And they were incredibly useful and some of the most important outposts to get because Kazam was locked by airship travel, but not everybody had like immediately. And the Yoder teleport was kind of weird and difficult to, to get to sort of in a dangerous part of the zone. It wasn't like right outside the city. There were just, it was, it was a tough place to get to. So the first time that you get there, level 25, and you're gonna be leveling Kazam, you're like, I if I die, it could be a half hour, if not more, before I get back here. That's crazy. But it added so much weight to the time you spent Kazam. You're like, this is my Kazam week, or like I'm I'm hanging out here, I'm gonna set my home point. And it, it made those choices of like, where is my home point? What am I gonna do? How long am I gonna spend it there? Those choices were impactful. You might take a break from leveling to to farm and gear up before you go out to Kazam because you know that the next time that you leave, you'll be level 31. You're like, I want to be ready. I want to have the money that I'm going to need for like my 30s. It's crazy. And I love all the feelings that that offers. It's one of my favorite parts about Final Fantasy XI, the size, the scope, the, the feeling of weight in those choices of like, what am I doing today? I can't forget anything before I leave the Mog House. I, I need to have everything, all my ducks in a row before I step out into the wilds because it could be difficult to get back. Or more importantly, difficult to get back and then back out to where I'm going. But what about the cons? The cons are easy and a, kind of a shorter list, to be honest. Time. Time is the biggest con. Look, time is the greatest resource any of us have, and even if you want to spend it playing video games, you may not want to spend it running from place to place. Time is critical and there was a a time when I would just throw eight hours a day at the Final Fantasy XI, but it's gotten a lot harder to do that with jobs, a lot of people have kids, just other games to play. It's it's a challenge. It is a huge challenge. And if somebody says, hey, it's gonna take you a half hour to get from here to here, you may not do that just because it's a pain in the ass. Also, to add on to that, the restriction of ability to, uh, to participate in events or join friends. So we were talking about the Kazam example, but like if somebody is across the world killing something and they're like hey i would love for you to, to help me out with this it could take you anywhere from five minutes to 45 minutes depending on your fastest method of travel to get there to get from point a to point b which may mean that you literally cannot help them or you can help them but it's going to take too long and they they're like never mind we need you out here sooner now Again, adding weight to choices, that means that those events that you need more people for, it was amazing to like plan out in advance. But it is kind of a pain if you hop on and like you're like, I wasn't gonna be able to play, but now I am, what are you guys up to? And they're like, oh, we're doing this mission. They actually, somebody just dropped, but we're 30 minutes away from you. <laughs> you know, it's frustrating. It's frustrating when you wanna play with friends and they're just not in the same spot. It's cool when it works. It can be annoying when it doesn't. And I mean, to be honest, that's kind of it. It all comes down to the time investment of doing activities, your ability to jump in quickly, join friends wherever they may be, and, and take place in events and game stuff without having to charge across the whole world and spend 45 minutes just literally getting to where you're going. So I don't know the answer. It is tough to play with this style, uh, the classic style. I've, I've struggled with it a little bit in our private server experiences although i will say focusing early on as hard as you can on outposts helps a ton using the outposts you can get to most of the places you need to get pretty quickly but there are still a few places that it ends up being a 10 15 20 minute run because the outpost is just not quite close enough and that is tough what do you guys think i would love to hear your thoughts especially with so many mmos coming out right now We've got New World that just launched. Um, Pantheon Rise of the Fallen is finally getting into a place where I'm hoping we see an alpha sometime next year. Ashes of Creation is continuing on its de developmental path. So I want to hear what you guys think. Do you like when travel itself is an obstacle giving you that scope of presence and, and space in a game? Or are you more about getting to where you need to get quickly? Something like uh, Final Fantasy XIV, even Destiny, the way that it approached travel, where for the most part, you can just get where you need to go like that. Love to know your thoughts. Uh, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope to see you guys all in the next one. Have a good one. Peace. Mission remix. Uh, oh, okay, that's. Whoa. <laughs> okay, that's. <laughs> Wait, for the record, hang on. Hang on. <laughs>
I don't know. You said I'm gonna move out of the way. So <laughs> he's gonna yeah. move out of the way. Rain <laughs> cicada for that one, or uh, what the? <laughs> he's gonna do the cone of fire, but instead <laughs> does the self-explosion technique. <laughs>